I believe the most effective way to get better at squash is to have on-court coaching, but not everybody has access to that option. That's one of the reasons I created my video analysis service. No matter where you live, you can still improve your squash. So how does it work? Well, you send me a five minute video of you playing a representative and competitive match and I send you back my analysis. Now representative means that it's a good representation of your normal play and competitive means it's not just you practicing with a friend, it's a serious match. In that analysis, which usually lasts between 15 and 20 minutes, I talk about court movement, shot selection, even your swing. I'll summarize what's not working well and tell you how to improve it. The video analysis costs 25 euros and is aimed at club players, the average club player. Now, beginners and improvers can use it. Of course, if you don't have access to any other option, then this is a good choice for you. And also some advanced players can use it. Although generally five minutes is not enough to have a fair analysis of your particular game. But I have had some advanced players use it and they have benefited from it. The rest of this video is an actual video analysis I performed recently, and I'd like to thank Piotrik and his playing partner for giving me permission to show you. In addition to the video analysis, I also send an email detailing all the things I talk about in the video. More information, including a frequently asked questions and a testimonial section, can be found on my website, bettersquash.com, under the services section. If after you've watched the video or you've read the website and you still have questions, then post a comment or send me an email and I'll respond as quickly as I can. So let's get started with the analysis. Hello, Piotrik. So what we're going to do now is we're going to watch the video together. I'm going to pause it and highlight and talk about some of the areas that you can improve. Now, those areas might be some tactical choices where you're hitting the ball, why you're hitting the ball there. But they also might be some technical things, maybe to do with your footwork, your swing, perhaps your grip. So after you've watched the video, of course, if you have any questions, then you just email me and I'll respond. So let's get started. So here we go. Just placing the camera. Okay, great to see that sign on the wall, on the door, making sure that people um, don't use uh, the wrong shoes. Now, we seem to be having a bit of trouble with this video. It's a little bit slow. Right, okay, so I like how you look around behind you, although I would prefer that you were, in fact, serving backhand. Backhand gives you a much more natural flow to the tee. You can sort of start by facing the side wall, and then you can walk forward, and as you're walking forward, you hit it. Another reason that I like people to serve backhand is that it helps them improve their backhand, because most times people need to improve that. But anyway, lots of people can serve well from all right, so it's a bit slow, but we're just going to go with it. I don't know what's happening here. So it's quite a good serve, but imagine if you'd have got that ball a little bit wider and it had hit the side wall first. That would have really caused your opponent a lot of problems. Okay, so now suddenly it's behind you and you're struggling to get the ball. So let's watch what happens. He plays a good shot and you try to get behind, but you've only got a little bit of wrist and you're never going to have enough strength to do that. Your footwork's not too bad. I mean, you've got separation. You're not too close to the wall. But because you haven't got your arm down here, you're never going to be able to get the ball back and you just try to flick it then. All right, so a small change in the serve would have changed the whole of that rally. All right, so your opponent's doing the same as you. Now, let's, let's see. He's serving like a... A tennis player would, which means the ball is going to come downwards because he's making contact. I like how you are going to volley. That left hand is very close, though. It should be much lower to give yourself a bit more space. You've got a very wide follow through and it comes down the middle. So on these service returns, it's very tempting to want to hit the ball harder than it comes to you, especially if your opponent is hitting it hard. But all you need to do is you need to use the uh, opponent's speed and block it. You'll get much more control and you'll be able to take them off the tee. All right, not too bad. Well done. Okay, bad luck. So let's just go back a little bit here. Let's just watch this rally again. So it all comes from... All right, now, 
actually let's take a look at this your grip is not too bad I, I would like to change it but more importantly can you see how you're you're sort of bending your wrist and this is a wristy shot this is a forearm so we're really just talking about I'm gonna move my camera back a bit there uh, we're just gonna talk about twisting the forearm instead of bending the wrist let's see what happens in this rally here okay well done for for getting it back I'm not going to complain about what happened because it was tight to the wall. I would like to see you move a little bit further away from the wall sooner. Well done for hitting it. Now, in general, we don't want to do this. We don't want to hit it and then go in front of the, you know, in front of the opponent, in front of the, the front wall. But sometimes you can't help it. Um, and you are in a good recovery position. And then he's hit a quite a wide, quite a good cross court. And you've done your best. I would have liked to have seen your racket up higher, but you can't always do that. Okay, so I can see you're tired. This is definitely the fourth game of a tough game. Right, so what I'm looking for here is I'm looking for commitment. I'm looking for you to, well, he's taking his time. He's definitely not rushing. Now, as a, as a, as a pl competitive player, I would be thinking here, I need to make the rallies as long as possible. I know that you're not feeling in a great condition because you were leaning forward, but this person is clearly struggling with having to do running. So my thinking would be, let's make him run as much as possible. And I honestly think that there's a, a psychology here that great squash players enjoy inflicting a little bit of pain on their opponent. Anyway, it's good that he's taking his time because he's not being rushed. Right. Now, I would like to see you step forward and volley this serve. If it ever comes. All right, here it is. Good. I like how you've volleyed it, but look what happened. You've kept moving, and now you're a couple of steps away from the ball before you even get a chance. I'd like you to stay still. Ideally, put your left foot forward to volley, but it's not a big problem. Volley the ball with a block and then just move directly back. All right, now, you're in a, a fairly strong position here. Okay, I'm happy with that. It's not deep enough. Okay, well done. I'm so sorry about this video. It's gone into slow motion for some reason. And then it jumps. Okay, so this is a good rally up and down wall. You're both, you, we just have to go back here. You're both hitting the ball a fraction too low for the speed and the height that you're hitting it. All right, so, well done for getting that volley. Right, now yours bounced just at the beginning of the service box. His bounces just at the back of the service box. Yours bounces in the middle of the service box. His is in the middle. Yours is just behind, but each time they're all just a bit too low. All right, so what I'm suggesting here is that in cases like this, when you're, you've got the ball, okay, so, he hits it now it hits just above the short line uh, sorry the service line yours is about the same just below the service line his is quite below now in all of these shots you're not forcing your opponent right behind you by hitting the ball just a little bit higher you're forcing them to either volley which i don't think is going to happen or to get much deeper we want this kind of rally to be after it hits the back wall and then he gets a pretty good cross court because you're quite committed. Let's watch your body position here. You're sort of committed to another straight shot. And then when he does hit it, you by the time you react, it's a little bit. But you play a nice little drop. And then I can't see because of that frame. He hits one. It's a winner. All right. So the general idea here would be fraction higher, get him behind you. Step forward, step forward. Okay, another short shot that hits just below the, the service line. He seemed to have missed it. The position you've got the camera is not terrible, but the those bars are, that left bar is just in the worst place. All right, so here again, a, a forehand, I would have preferred a backhand serve. Okay, good. Now that time it did hit the sidewall, but I think it's a little bit too hard. Yeah, okay, well done. Good recovery. Okay. 
Yeah, you're behind him in this rally. You've really got to, yeah, you're struggling. Okay, good, good, good. You got, you gave yourself high. I'm so sorry about this video. I really don't understand why it's going in slow motion and in normal speed. All right, so this particular rally, you were under pressure all of the time. Okay, from the moment you hit quite a good serve. I don't, I'm not a big fan of your serving position, but okay, comes off the back wall. He manages to get a nice little cross court. You do your best to keep it going. Well done. Uh, it's good that you're keeping the rally going, but at no point do I feel that you're... Okay, there you are. You're aiming high. Right. What we're going to learn from this rally is that most of the time you're hitting the ball with your wrist instead of using your swing. So we're going to watch it. Okay, there you can't help but use your wrist. All right, see, let's keep watching your hand. Okay, not a bad swing, actually, in that case. You did manage to get it going. But here, you're under a lot of pressure. All wrist, that was. And this one. See how you haven't got your arm back? And I know it's easy for me to sit here and say that, and it's much harder for you to do, and then you're in trouble. Now, what I would recommend is a little bit of solo practice where you try to swing properly. Now, that's easy for me to say, of course, and you need to make sure you understand what a proper swing is. But I think a little bit of solo practice will help. Oh, straight back to him there. But you won the point, so... Let's see where this serve goes. Very inconsistent serving at the moment. Ah. Now, what made you think that this was a good time to, to go for a winner? Was it a bad time? That's the. Um, it, it sounds a little bit rude. I don't mean to be rude there, but... All right, so your opponent's on the tee. You're stretching. It's a very difficult shot. It, it, for me, this is a defensive shot, to be honest. Um, he's not that far behind you. You're not in a particularly good position. And then you miss. I know it's easy to say. Sitting here in the comfort of my sitting room. All right. Excuse me. Sorry. Okay. All right. Very flicky cross court that goes out. Let's watch it again. Here we go. Oh, no. Not far enough back. All right. Here we go. Okay. See how there's, there's some arm, but see how this racket has dropped. So it's going to be this kind of flick instead of much more arm see there we go that is that flick and there's very little arm and suddenly the ball goes very high your arm your shoulder is much stronger than your forearm if you can be blocking those even on the forehand just block okay good width All right you're in front of him stepping forward right now your position here is good. If I can if I can go back just a fraction. Right, we're gonna watch it. Okay, so okay, great width. Got him in the corner. I'm I'm happy how you're moving here. This is this is great. If we pause this, if that bar wasn't in the way, it'd be fantastic. But what I can tell you is about to happen is that you're about to hit the ball. You're almost certainly going to go cross court. And your left leg is going to come much further forward and you're going to have to turn around. Now, you see the pros do this. And it's frustrating as a coach for me to tell people, don't do this. Ah, but Philip, the pros do it. Yeah, the pros spend hours and hours on court. They are much faster than you. What If you could stop yourself from moving forward, hit the ball straight and bring yourself back, you'd be much more effective. Now, let's just see if I've made an idiot of myself. No. You see what happens? You twisted. All of the momentum hasn't been transferred into the ball. 
it's been transferred partly into the ball and partly into the twist. You have to use your hand. Yes, I know pros do that, but we really shouldn't do it if we can help it. You've taken two steps now. Well, one extra step, and you're about to take another one to get back to where you were. Those two steps make a huge difference. It also means anybody who's a little bit better is going to watch it, know that you're going to go cross court because you really can't go straight, and they're going to play a better shot from it. And okay, you're back on the tee before your opponent hits the ball. I, I, I acknowledge that, but you didn't even need to be that much effort. All right. Now, another, another point I would like to make here is from this position, I much prefer you to go straight. Going cross court is more dramatic. It's more spectacular, especially if it hits the nick. This one doesn't, but it doesn't really need to. The problem is that your thinking will be, but Philip, the furthest point away from me is that front corner. The more I can make him run, the better. And in general, that's not a bad philosophy. But by going cross court, you're giving your opponent a lot more space to work. If you can hit the ball straight, one, you give them much less time to get there. Yes, they're closer, but you've got much less time. Two, they are running against the wall. Even if they get there, there's very little that they can do. Now, in this case, you win the point, and that's great. I'm happy for that. But if he was a bit faster, let's watch where the second bounce is. One, two. Just behind that uh, bar, the, the wall of the bar. Um, and if he'd got it, all he needed to do was hit a straight shot, and then you'd be under a lot more pressure. Okay? And it's one of these times that... I prefer you choose the right shot, but not necessarily win the point to build good habits, than play the wrong shot, become comfortable playing the wrong shot because you've had some success. The moment you start playing better people, you won't have the success, but you'll have the bad habits. Okay. I can't apologize enough. I really don't know what's going on. When I watch it individually, it works. It doesn't it doesn't sort of go slow anyway hopefully you don't mind too much all right again not a huge fan of this i'd prefer a lower point of contact and a much higher return but it's effective sometimes so now you've hit the ball at him he's done well to hit it and you've where have you gone there you've gone into that corner all right we won the point okay can't complain every single point. All right, now let's look at your position. All right, here we go. You've got the wrong feet in the wrong position. Normally, we prefer to hit the ball with their left foot forward. That is changing because it's less important because of lighter rackets. But it's, it's still a more natural motion. If you start further back, you put your right foot just in the corner of the service box, your left foot forward, you make contact and you can naturally flow. But here you're static, so you're going to have to hit it and you see how there's a point where you're not moving. That motion should naturally carry you to the tee. And there he's about to hit it and you're not on the tee. If he hits a very short volley, you've got a long way to go. Okay, something happened there. You can't think well i won the point so everything's okay against a better player they would probably play a very early volley drop or at least back down the wall all right good it hits the side wall i like it when it hits the side wall here as i was saying earlier i'd be looking for a, for a backhand straight drop yeah that's what you did okay well done again I would rather a moving motion. Again, look at you, standing still. He hits it, and you're not even near the tee. Okay, oh, nice. Oh, bad luck. Oh, it, hit, it went out. Okay, I thought you'd played a high, deep drive there. I was going to be quite happy with that. Now, this is the fourth game of a tough match, so it's even more unfair for me to be picking holes in everything complaining now that was a great cross court not a great swing but a great cross court now here what are you going to do i've got a feeling you're going to hit it hard and i might have gone soft 
Oh, you went straight back to him. Of all the shots you could have played. Okay, notice that wrist down here. I prefer it sort of level with the racket. But you did. You played a good shot. Can't deny that. It's a little bit risky. Right. So you get him into the corner. You force the weak return. You're in, in charge. Here, literally anything except the straight drive. And it goes straight back to him. And it's too short anyway. A drop. A boast. A cross court short. A cross court deep. And then he hits a <coughs> lucky nick. Well done, Mr. Light Blue. He has the same. I wonder if you've got these same habits. I wonder if I'm hoping that you haven't been taught that by somebody um, because you both do it, or maybe you, one of you saw the other one do it and then you copied. Anyway, great shot, great shot. Now that hit the short line, uh, short line, the, the service line, but you made contact lower than previously, which is why it went deeper. You've got him right in the corner. Good, good. Okay, you're getting to the T. Okay, I think I'd like to see that again. All right, so he serves. It's a fairly good swing. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. You're watching. You're now looking at the front. I'd prefer you to be looking a little bit behind. So when he makes contact, you've got no idea where it's going. It's quite short. There's that. See that little jump again? Let's watch you. Sorry. Not much fun watching it 10 times in a row. Right, so it's a great stretch. I'm, I'm okay with that. You make contact, but then you sort of bring that other leg forward, takes you further away from the tee. It's more effort to get to the tee. And now you've got to do a little bit more work. And as it happened, you hit a good, nice cross court and he couldn't get it back. Okay. Nice high serve. He catches you. That's another cross court that he's got. That's the second time I think that he's caught you with those cross courts. Let's look at your position on the tee when he does that. All right, so here we go. You're there. You are totally committed now to him playing straight. You are totally committed because not only are you facing that way, but you're actually moving that way as well. He, his swing is, uh, could be improved, but he makes contact with the ball very well. And then suddenly you're just way too further forward. So the solution here is, to have your chest facing the front or just in the corner, but never right against the side. Please don't say to me, ah, oh, but Philip, the pros do it. You are not a pro. You're not spending hours and hours on court. You don't have great reactions. By facing the corner, the front corner, you can guess it's probably going to be down the wall, but you can still cover the back and don't move until the ball's been hit because then you're absolutely in trouble. It's not that the, your opponent played a great cross court. It wasn't a bad cross court. It's that you had committed so much to going for his non-existent straight drive. Now, I'm happy that you hit it straight, but you hit it too low. And you're feeding him an easy shot. If you'd have played that shot much higher, he'd have been behind you. You'd have been in charge. As it is, you're behind him. Okay, now, well done. You Now you've got him. He does well to boast it. Watch this movement afterwards. You do well to reach it. And you give yourself time. But not enough time. Oh, he hit the tin. Oh, yes. You asked him, did you hit the tin? Yes, I did. I wish I hadn't, but I did. All right, then. So, well done for getting that ball. Like a longer stretch if possible. All right, now, you're boasting it, aren't you? Look into the clouds. Don't look to the clouds. Don't look to the ceiling. This. Oh, my gosh. What happened there? This. Sorry. Right. We're going to watch you again. Okay. This is after he hit the sort of shot into the tin. Right. We all get caught up. We all get excited by these sort of shots. Oh, my God. I mean, I've got so much time. I've got so much space. And. All you need to do is put it straight into the corner, not too low, this high. Make it hit the sidewall because it takes the speed off the ball and slows it down. But you go for this sort of little silly boast. And even if, even if it had gone up, where would it have gone? 
it would have come back more or less to you anyway. So you surprised yourself as well as your opponent. Volley. Okay. I know it's easy for me to say volley, but it's a lot easier to say it than it is to just let the ball go back in the corner. And there we go. So to summarise, generally I like the short selection that you're playing. Generally I'm happy, more so at the back. At the front, I feel that you could just push the ball short and have more success. Uh, your movement, I'd like to feel, especially on the serve, that it's a flowing motion. Motion. You're stepping to the ball, you're hitting, you're coming backwards. On the serve, of course, you're stepping to the ball and going towards the tee. You've got to be careful about that extra step. Yes, I know we see pros do it, but you're not a pro. You need to step, hit, and come back with the motion if you can. Uh, I'd like to see less wrist. Now, I know that that's so easy for me to say, and you need to do some practicing. Uh, ideally, just practice with some short shots so that you're stopping doing this, but you're just pushing the ball. Uh, serve. I'd like to see you, as I say, I'd like to see you practice your backhand on the serve, if you could, uh, on the right side, so that there's a natural movement to the tee from both sides. And just be careful that you don't commit to one side. I've seen you commit a few times. You've that Your opponent has hit two cross courts that completely surprised you, and they were winners. And two points might not seem much, but it looked like that this game was quite close. So those will be the, that will be the summary there. Now, what do I want you to do as your homework? Well, I'd like you to do a little bit of movement around the court. This is called ghosting. And what I want you to do is become a little bit more accustomed to stepping, swinging, and coming back instead of taking the extra step. I'd also like to, you to sir, uh, volley some shots to yourself from the service uh, short line, the line on the floor for the serve, to get accustomed to a little bit of blocking. Now, if you have any questions, you have any doubts, you feel as though that I was a little unfair in one particular assessment or something, just let me know in an email and I'll do my best to respond as quickly as possible. And as always, do something every single day to improve your squash. See ya.